Mike Davis. I'm a painter. And I uh, just want to congratulate John on 10 years. Awesome. He's doing a good thing. John Tripp's a hell of a guy. Whatever he does, he does to the fullest. Like, 150%. It's amazing. Just like watching the dude is watching a comet that doesn't burn out. And it's amazing to be here for 10 years. It's good to see everybody. John is a super, like, rare, enthusiastic kind of guy. I think that he brings something really positive to the art world, you know, through his sight. He's, like, receptive enough where he'll see somebody young and see something in their work and think it's, like, you know, worth posting on the site just because he likes it. There are very few curatorial personnel that'll really go out of their way to help out young emerging artists in the sense that I think it's harder for younger artists to be able to go to MoMA and really understand why, you know, people were making the work that they were. But I think from a younger perspective, it's incredibly important to be able to see what other young people are doing worldwide. Because not everyone can, like, get to the shows. Like, they don't necessarily live in a major city or somewhere in proximity to a major city. So it's great to have, a, like, a website like Fiegel Face where you can see what's going on, what's relevant, what's current. Another 10 years will pass will be nothing. Yeah, yeah. Hooray for Fiegel Face. <laughs> oh, shit, it's popping off. <laughs> My name is John Tripp. I run an arts website called fecalface.com and an art gallery called fecalface.gallery. I was born in, in Maryland, and my parents divorced, and I moved to Ohio. And I spent, like, pretty much my formative years, I guess, in Toledo, Ohio, from, like, 7 to 18. And then when I was 18, I um, dropped out of engineering school, got on a Greyhound bus, and moved to San Francisco. You know, I have to work this whole summer so I can save my money and move to California. If I have to, like, Quit work, dude. I'm suing you. <laughs> so I can go. I was in my like some boring engineering class and kind of looked around at everyone in the class and realized, like, I, I don't want to be here. Like, I'm just gonna get a round trip bus ticket. That's what I told my mom and that I would be back soon. And ended up here and now I've been here for I don't know, a million years. When I first moved here got really involved in the skateboard scene and started doing, um, started filming actually for different skateboard companies, like helping to film skaters' parts for um, other companies' videos and then started filming for like Thrasher. And, and while I was working at Thrasher, I started my own little magazine called Fecal Face. I just wanted to make, put together a Xerox handmade little magazine that would feature some of my photography and some of my friends' artwork and just, you know, working in a magazine, I wasn't the editor, but when you create your own little zine, you know, I, I was able to put whatever I wanted into it, whether it was serious or funny or whatever. So in 2000, um, I just wanted to learn how to start putting websites together. So I borrowed my friend's computer, my roommate's computer, and got a book on HTML and taught myself how to do that, and that was in 2000. And uh, when I put the site together, I just had to buy a, a domain name I figure the fecal face. I just name it after my zine and continue doing what I was doing for my zine, which is just taking my friends' photos and taking pictures of random things because digital photography just came out then too. So I um, was able to just do what I was doing in that magazine and put it online. It's grown so much exponentially, you know, in the last 10 years. I, I feel like I grew up with them, so I, I I, f I feel like if they keep on getting better, I'll keep on getting better. It'll be interesting to see wh where else it, it can go, you know? It's, it's become a much larger community. It's incorporated New York, LA, I mean, like all over the world. It started talking about going to the bars on the mission and getting shitty, and now it's talking about, you know, artwork and shows that are opening in Europe and Asia, and it's just like, where do you go from there? Just meeting people and getting emails from people from around the world, it always, like, kind of took me by surprise, and like, wow, people actually, they like this, you know? I mean, I'm glad that they do, it's just, uh, 
you know, as the site kept going throughout the years, um, it's nice to hear that people liked it. From the outside looking in back then, his intentions were so innocent and beautiful. Like, he really just wanted to share this with people. And then it grew. And then it started being like people from other cities were putting their art up on there. And then it started being like art shows from other cities. It wasn't until I got out of town and realized that someone else halfway around the world was like reading this thing on a daily basis that it hit me what an impact it was having outside of our community. The thing that everybody forgets with Fecal Face is like, he has the tiniest gallery in the city limits, square footage wise. I don't think there's a gallery that's actually smaller than that. But what nobody ever thinks about is no matter what you hang up in there, 15,000 people a day are coming to visit that gallery, you know? And it's like he's got the smallest square footage with the most traffic. And that's a hard thing to figure out. In this company of the internet does one thing really well, and that is if you're good, people can find you a lot easier than they could before. It does a huge service to the community, a huge service to all kinds of artists, and the broadening out really, uh, really uh, gives uh, weight to the particular discipline that we see here, a sort of mix of fine art, urban art, and just kind of a new way to go. I think we just see more good art as a result of it. And the, uh, the traditional uh, gallery system and the hierarchy and the politics doesn't have such a stranglehold the way it used to. But things are just, it's, it's really an open field right now. John had an amazing thing going on, and then he met Jessica, and she cleaned up his act a lot, you know? I think it, it kind of got him motivated to be better in, in all facets of life. My wife, Jessica, I mean, I couldn't even do it without her, because there's just no way. She helps out so much, and sometimes I think I take it for granted. <laughs> I always have something pointed at me. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a perverted way. <laughs> the very first time I met John was in Dolores Park. And I hope I'm not saying too much here. He, uh, he came up to me and he was like, I know you. And I actually know who he was from the site, but we had never met before. And he was like, I know you. And I was like, no, no, you don't. He's like, no, no, I know you. And he invited me to a, uh, a bonfire that evening but I actually was in a relationship at the time and did not go, declined the invitation, but definitely, you know, was like, oh, that guy's so cute. And then we met um, like two years later again, and he said the same thing. We met at an art show, at, our, at my friend's art show, and he said the same thing. He said, oh, I, I know you, where do I know you from? And then we uh, went home and have been going home together ever since. <laughs> I feel really blessed that I found myself somehow involved in all this and you know not only that I get to spend my life with a person who I really enjoy but that he does something that I really enjoy so I feel lucky <laughs> especially when we first met you know I I'd known about the site and you know had followed the site and I always thought it was you know this big entity with a big staff and then to meet and it was like oh this is this happens on your laptop in your bedroom you know, and, and tons of people, you know, helping and taking photos. But, you know, definitely an inspiration to me in terms of just, help, you know, helping me hone in on the things that I love and seeing how if you just work really hard at them, you know, you can, you can create something. The vast of these islands is where I keep, but I will not be there till you arrive. Yeah, the tenure show was super fun. It was a little, uh, it's a little hard to narrow. I mean, you can't show. I mean, there's so many artists that I'm into and that I've known for a long time. It's hard to narrow it down. That was the hardest point. Uh, look, trying to look for a place that would accommodate that many artists and, and you know, as many people as I thought would show up. Um, luggage store was definitely the first choice. I was completely honored and surprised when the uh, luggage store agreed to do the show. Um, I remember just, kind of floating that idea around and thought, like, maybe there's a possibility. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask. I was taken, first of all, by an amazing compliment from him that, uh, that it was our um, program in the 90s, uh, when he became aware of it, that uh, inspired him 
to, to do what he's doing today. I like that their approach seems a little bit more organic and not so, so shiny. And, and I feel like how they have approached the art scene is very sincere. I try my best to do the same. I just like that, they, that the things that they do at luggage stores, they, to, from what I know, and I've known of them for a long time, they do it out of heart. Greatly inspired by what he's managed to do in the 10 years that Fecal Face has been a vital force in the transmission of art and culture worldwide. You know, that's the way it is in life. There's a number of things that align at a given moment, and like amazing things happen, and I feel like we're fortunate to be part of that amazement. The show was great. It was nice to see that, that, that kind of turnout. And to have those, all the artists that were in the show was, I think it was the best, best show we've had so far, definitely. Maya coming all the way, you know, out here from New York, you know, for her to not only participate, because I've been a fan of her work for so long, but to come out and, you know, stall a mural like she did. We're at the Luggage Store Gallery in San Francisco, and this is a wall I'm almost finished painting. And I'm making it look like uh, the wall is a curtain that's opening and revealing this kind of like chandelier thing floating out in the universe. The chance to paint on a wall here, like this wall has been painted by Margaret Kilgallen, Joe Jackson, Ruby, Alicia McCarthy, Swoon, like, I'm like, I want to get up on that wall. So there's like layers and layers and layers of awesome art on this, on all of these walls, but I, I wanted to like add mine to it. So I got to, so I came out here and did it. I think my favorite part of the process is the process, you know, kind of losing my mind in the process in the best possible way. I don't like finishing. I don't want to have to stop. It's always kind of bittersweet. I think John is attracted to artists who are really industrious, really prolific, and are really technically skilled. I love the reader submissions sections and stuff too, like young folks. I mean, we, I didn't have that growing up, you know? And I'm, like, I think that's so freaking cool that there's like kids in probably junior high, high school and stuff that are turned onto Fecal Face and are like sending stuff in to get published. Thank you, Fecal Face. Yeah, it was really exciting to have Maya there working on her mural and just kind of this nice influx of people coming in and out and seeing how it all came together. And then of course the opening was packed. It was, it was kind of like, almost like a wedding where, you know, before we got married, everybody said, you know, oh, you're, you're not gonna remember anything. It goes so quickly. It's, you know, you're not gonna eat anything. You're gonna be exhausted. And our wedding actually, wasn't really like that, but the opening was like that. The 10-year opening was like that, where it was like, oh yeah, oh, well, that happened somehow. I don't remember much of the actual event, except, you know, just like lots of, lots of good vibes and being excited. I do feel like there was a lot of love in that room. And I also feel like most people, 90% of that show brought A game. But dudes like Trip are inspiring to me, because Johnny's like, he's all about it. He's not, he's not leaving it at the door. He's taking the risks. He doesn't have a full-time job anymore. He's living off odds and ends from the site and the gallery. And fucking more power to you, dude. Because we came up in a scene full of a million dudes that were all about taking risks. And now everybody's sitting on the safest road they can, and that's part of being in your 30s. And I admire and love this motherfucker, not because he's put me on his website a million times or exposed my heart to the world, but what I really love and truly give a shit about Fecal Face is this is a man who had the greatest intentions, whose project was so much weirder than your band, or your fucking graffiti, or whatever the fuck thing you were doing 10 years ago that you've long since stopped doing, this thing wasn't even a thing. It didn't even exist. And he's not only made it work for himself for 10 years, but people have copied him all over the world. You have to admire that. It's such a funny recipe, and like, I don't know. 
proud of the dude, you know? What this kid said to me at the opening, uh, you know, we were, you know, just, it just got so incredible that, but we knew that it had to end. And, you know, so I finally, I did the flick of the lights and there were these kids that were the last to leave, you know, the next, the next generation, you know, and they're like studying the walls in the luggage store hallway. I said, yeah, I'm sorry, we gotta go. And they were kind of, you know, reluctantly leaving and the kid turned around, the last to leave, and he said, don't stop. And that's what I wanna say to John, don't stop. I am getting older, and my, probably my other career paths. <laughs> probably can't be a doctor at this point, it's a little too late. I've been doing fecal face for so long, I don't think I'm gonna turn into a rich guy doing this, but that's not why I do it. As the site has sort of grown organically, I just sort of keep swimming in the direction that feels natural, and uh, if anyone wants to contribute to the site, if they think that they, they look at it on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever, and feel that they have something to say that isn't heard or a direction that they, they would like to focus on or a feature they want to do, like that's that would be fantastic. I look forward to their email or tweet or Facebook message or however they want to connect with me. Mm -hmm.